Well, hello, everyone. This is Ken Hardison, and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. And today we have the pleasure and honor of having Ryan Shin, who is the guru on artificial intelligence and who owns a company that you really need to hear about. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Ken. Glad to be on the show. Yeah, man. So, yeah, uh, tell us about your, tell us your story. I mean, you know, I know you're young, but tell us how you got to own this company or be part of the founders or whatever. And, and uh, then I want to get more into data and more into artificial intelligence, but I want to know more sure. about your company to start with. For it's sure. Kind of fascinating what you do. Yeah, well, my, my journey actually started in the fitness uh, side of things. I worked for an organization called Orange Theory Fitness, and I was part of Ground Zero before any uh, thought process franchise was ever in existence. They sent me in to understand whether this was a franchise that we could sell. Thankfully, it was. Um, ended up opening up the first 75 uh, locations and then uh, created the sales and operations manual for the franchise, which has now grown to what it is today. However, I was working seven days a week and um, traveling every other day. And I said, this isn't for me. So I hopped over to the tech side, uh, started working in Silicon Valley, working for some great companies and uh, learning how to then incorporate a go-to-market strategy within the tech space. Uh, from there, uh, rose the ranks and became a consultant um, where I was consulting with startup uh, organizations and taking them from zero to 500 um, as quick as possible by laying in foundation infrastructure structures and processes. Um, and that's where I stumbled upon um, settle it where, you know, we had a technology where we were trying to take it out to the personal injury space. And uh, unfortunately it fell flat. And that was part of, because, you know, we we're trying to educate people in the healthcare industry. Um, when I came in, I said, oh, let's strip all that. Let's actually talk to firms. Let's talk to these attorneys. Let's talk to the way they operate as a business. What me makes sense in terms of the world of efficiency, um, and we started fine tuning from there. We started building up the product. Um, you know, obviously we're talking about artificial intelligence, but when we first started, we we're using a different type of AI called attorney intelligence and the feedback that we received from all these firms that we we're working with allowed us to really fine tune and shape our product, uh, to then deliver data at a speed and scale, which the industry has never seen before. Um, so once uh, once we created the product, we went out to the market, started going to different conferences, such as PILMA, which was a, a massive conference for us and in the world of exposure and just getting to know some of the most esteemed firms um, that were attending the conference in itself. And uh, because of uh, shows like that, that allowed us to really launch um, our product into the personal injury space. So we are first to market. There's no existence of uh, the level of technology that we're providing in the industry. Um, however, being well received so far. Yeah. So you you said something that's really like profound. I don't even know if you know you knew what you said, but. When you said, you know, we actually stripped it and we went and asked them what they needed and tried to understand their business. And I think sometimes when people start, they get in their head, well, this is what they need or this is what, and I've learned a long time ago, you know, I do a survey every year to my members saying, you know, what do you like we're doing? What don't you like? You know, what's your number one deal you like? What's the thing you like the least? What are we not doing that you'd like to see us doing? And uh, getting feedback because, you know, you got to give people what they want. It's like uh, it's like marketing. you got to figure out what the pain points are and what's keeping them up at night. If you don't know that, how can you give them what they want, you know, if you don't know what, what they need? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and part of the process was, wasn't just understanding, well, what is our value um, in respects to managing partners? But it's more so what is our value in respects to the paralegals that will be touching the product and digging yeah. into the data or the leadership 
that's in charge of the efficiency of the operations and how to implement those strategies accordingly by incorporating this data. And so we spoke with everybody from the intake to uh, case managers, to paralegals, to legal assistants, to attorneys, to managers, operations, office managers, all the way up until uh, to managing partners. And because of that, that helped us really define the user experience. Um, and we're not led on with our own uh, knowledge of what we think the industry is. No, let's hear it from the industry. Yeah. Uh, so so explain to our listeners and viewers exactly what Settle It is and how it works. Yeah, absolutely. So Settle It, we uh, essentially... About five years ago, we we're in the manual medical record retrieval space. And um, when we were really into that space, we got to learn a lot of the pains that firms were going through on a daily basis just for requesting records. The, the cost um, that went into it, the no records found, um, you know, not having the right providers, and then the obviously the length of time to getting uh, um, the records in hand to make a determination. But oftentimes, once they do have that record in hand, what they found out was they didn't have a case that they thought they did, right? Or they had more to the case. We just thought it was very inefficient uh, to the timeline and uh, to access information. And quite frankly, we got tired. So from there, we created a technology, uh, an API, if you will, to start connecting into multiple databases right across the country. Call it um, your provider databases, claims databases, and pharmacies like CVS, Rite Aid, Walgreens of the world. Connected right into their systems to gain access to digital data. So if you were to take a paper medical record and those words jumped right off the page, entered your screen, bring it back seven to 10 years, all the way up into real time in their pharmacy, medical and, and claims history. And to get that delivered with a single click within five minutes, well, that's gonna give you a very comprehensive understanding of what your client has been through. A lot of firms are struggling with even just getting a provider list, fantastic. In five minutes, you're gonna get a comprehensive understanding of which providers that your client has visited, when they visited, the specialty, everything that you would need to make that request. The only difference is now you're getting this in five minutes. So imagine speaking to a client, getting this list and being able to validate their provider journey to set them off right, to understand what the case build up is, if there's any unknowns or uh, things that may impact the case at later stages. Well, fantastic. There's this instant gratification with digital data uh, that comes along with the settlement product. So that's what we're essentially providing. Um, you know, on the single event side, you're 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 going to have different types of cases, whether it's your typical MVA slip and fall. Uh, regardless of that matter, you're going to have to go through a discovery stage, and oftentimes that's where you find all the unknowns. Well, great, we're a pre-discovery tool. Query the database, gain an understanding of what's filled into that case, the landmines and the gold mines. Um, and that's essentially what we deliver on the mass tort side. There's a, an incredible, um, unfortunately, there's a, there's a big problem in the industry and the way uh, firms are trying to validate their claims or even have the right identity. And because of that, most firms are looking for specific diagnosis codes or drug codes to validate that the, the claimant was indeed affected by the product or whatever tort that you may be in. So what, what Settlet will do is we'll identify that for you. We'll, we'll validate those diagnoses. We'll validate those drug codes to ensure that you are pursuing the right uh, claimant in the right time. Yeah, I mean, I could see, because I was at the mass tort deal and, and they were talking about all this fraud by these lead companies, coaching people to say, yeah, I had this and this and I went to this, yeah. And I was taking this drug during this period of time. And uh, that will make it very clear, very quickly, whether or not they're lying or not. Yeah. Uh, save and, a lot of, lot of time. And, and uh, for those attorneys that took it into court and was turn, turned away because it was fraudulent, well, we want to add that layer of protection, right? So Yeah. That's that's genius, man. Thank and you. I would think you could charge this off as a, as a case cost to your client. 
Absolutely. So, you know, we do provide itemized receipts uh, that can be dispersed to the clients. Obviously, um, you know, uh, with this um, comes a level of automation. So given that we're a tech company, um, we should have those abilities. So what is it? Is it does it run different costs or is it just a one flat fee for each? So there's there's different costs. Um, let's let's talk about what a query is, right? So a query is when we take the first thing that we're going to do is we we use your client's profile information, and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to clean that up, right? We're going to fill in all the missing gaps of data, whether it's their missing social, missing date of birth, previous addresses. That's vitally important, especially if they've been to multiple pro providers across multiple states. Uh, so we wanna fill in and, and enrich the data through our enricher tool as quick as possible. That's almost instantaneous. Once we do enrich that profile information, we're gonna ping that across our network, all of our databases, and any successful matches that come back under that profile information, we're gonna gather that. We're gonna push that into our portal within five minutes, the digital data. If in the case we're able to pick up any documents like electronic medical records, in fact, about two weeks ago, we handed, about, handed over 59 electronic medical records in a single pull. Um, so that's a query. So it doesn't matter how much information, one single query can capture the history. Now, we can only capture information up to in real time. So any anything else beyond that would merit another query. A query can cost you anywhere from $85 a query to $115 a query. So very inexpensive to get, get a pretty great comprehensive download of, of the client. Um, and of course, because we are connected into networks and not the provider themselves, there's no provider fees or cost per page for any documents we're able to retrieve. If we are able to retrieve any of those documents, that's coming within 24 to 48 hours. I imagine that took a lot of work to get everybody to agree to that because you got to probably sign a lot of indemnification agreements and things like that. Because well, I mean, it took us four and a half years. Yeah, yeah, it took us four and a half years to connect into um, all these databases. Uh, we did it strategically and very quietly because uh, we knew what we were creating. Um, but there's a, a few pieces of motivation that that uh, allows us to to evolve the product to where we need it to be. Number one is the 21st Century Cures Act, which mandates every provider to create an electronic copy of their medical record. And um, they had about five year grace period to do so. And fast forward to January of this year, they're federally being mandated or they will incur fines up to millions for failing to transition. So this, this is for so that patients can have easy access to their own records online. Uh, we knew that, so we wanted access to that digital data. Um, so that was the motivation. But because we're connected into the networks, yes, we do need a level of authorization. It is a single um, authorization signature that we would need, indicating that the firm has the power of attorney to utilize the client's information to access. Um, but with that authorization um, and an agreement with us, you can query the database away um, and start digging into the cases right away. Well, you definitely were ahead of the curve. So having said that, what do you see in the future for AI? I mean, are we just seeing the tip of the iceberg or what, what do you see? Our lawyers, if you were a lawyer, uh, get ready to go over the next two or three years, what would you be looking at as far as AI? Yeah, so look, I think there's a lot of misconceptions around AI. And a lot of that is maybe a lack of knowledge or understanding. If you're just getting turned on to tech or AI in that in, in that sense and how to incorporate that within your workflows. Well, there's a lot of learning to be to be had, right? Is it generative? Are you looking, what are you trying to develop within those processes or what you what are you trying, what task are you trying to accomplish? And the misconception is 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 this going to replace people? Now um no. It will not replace people today. Can it have the potential to replace people in the future? Absolutely. Um, yes, this artificial intelligence can, can indeed get involved. But the, 
the challenge or not the challenge, but what I would suggest most firms, if you don't have even a baseline knowledge of what AI is and even, even the first steps of getting into understanding how to incorporate that, start booking meetings with different products. Now, one uh, one thing that I'm going to um, mention with that is you have to understand most products, especially within this space, are brand new. So they don't have the full tenure. They don't have the full understanding and the full scope of their deliverables just yet. Everybody is really just if you're an AI, you're really fine tuning your systems uh, to really uh, compute out efficiency for, for the firms. So start booking some meetings with different technologies, learn what's out there and what can be incorporated. And I think from those organizations and the way they communicate their services, you'll get a probably a faster understanding of where AI can be incorporated in those processes. Because learning from scratch and trying to say, oh, we could put AI upon case acceptance to start generating or you know, we can do it after litigate, uh, filing suit for litigation to document all the all, all, all the notes and great. Yeah. We're going Start to we're, that, right, we're actually going to have a workshop going on at the same time for staff or marketing people or at the Pilma Summit next year mm -hmm. in May. Uh, but last day, I'm going to we'll have like a three hour workshop where you can learn how to use it in the marketing content marketing videos and then yes. um using it to manage cases like with the uh, your your company even up uh, these different these different softwares yeah. uh esquire tech there's so many of them out there right now you know that uh and i i think like you said they're just developing they're gonna get better and better uh we did a little AIC workshop back in august in north carolina and uh we had about 50 firms show up and uh, it was more of a workshop. It really wanted, it was really like what we had then. I'll be honest with you, I didn't even record it. And and, and my wife said, why didn't you record that? You could get sound bites. I said, because this stuff is, in six months is going to be completely different. But you got to start somewhere, right? You got to get the basis. Uh, and so we were sitting there showing, you know, how to build avatars, how, what's out there now, you know, what to watch out for, just like chat GPT, what in, Six eight months is like three versions come out. Yeah, I mean, and they're already getting ready to launch another one. I heard another about. one. Yeah, Ch Chat GPT four turbo. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it just keeps. Uh, it reminds me of when the chip started out, the microchip, and you about every six months a new one would come out and it'd be yep. stronger and stronger. And, I mean, you kind of. I mean, it's not the same thing, but it, the speed of growth is probably even faster. But the deal is, it just got to where you know, so much information can be stored in such a tiny little thing and it just kept getting, you know, more and more and more and more. And when yeah. is it going to stop? If you think about like even just delivery of information, um, we went from floppy disks to C CD-ROMs, CDs, to now USB keys, to then every, all, all the data into our computers. And yeah. it being on the cloud. So yeah, absolutely. Just like um, data and the way data is held, same thing is going to happen for artificial intelligence. It's just, um, I think it, right now it is, there's that new car smell to it. Yeah. And there's only maybe a handful of organizations out there that are truly uh, understanding um, how to do it appropriately and grow with the market. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's here to stay. It's going to get more and more incorporated. And, and the more that you delay to get somebody in your firm or somebody on your staff to get learning, just to learn, to understand where and how these things can be incorporated. I, I say it's imperative to start today. Yeah. I've told all my people at Pilma. They're, they're one of the requirements of the job for the rest of this year, next year is every month at our monthly meeting, they've got to bring me something that they could use in a, that's with AI that they could use to make their jobs easier, faster, more productive, more, more, more client, whatever. Uh, I said, I'm not saying we're going to use it, but I want you to be looking for it because I think, you know, I, I don't have, I'm not a, I'm not a 
Fortune 500. I can't afford a whole little AI department. But I, I mean, I think law firms could do that. I know what they're thinking. They're saying, well, we can't afford. And I know, I know some companies that will bring, I know some SEO companies that are bringing in specialists in AI just to help them plan for the future because they know that it's going to be a big deal with the, with the marketing content, backlinks, coding, all this stuff. And so they're, they're, the smart SEO companies are already getting these people in there. Well, I don't know that law firms are, I ain't going to say smart enough, but just not big enough or not. But I think you can still get your people start looking into it or bring, or you, everybody's got somebody in their firm that's a techie. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, yeah. I always say, who's the techie? When I'm doing my mastermind, okay, who in here is the techie in case I can't get this projector working? Because I know, you know, it's not going to be me. Uh, you know, and I'm not a techie. I don't even know how to type. But let me tell you, I'm playing with chat GPT-4. Not every day, but about every other day. I go in there and just play with it just to get yeah. used to giving it prompts. Yeah. Because, you know, and then I ask it about other stuff, uh, you know, and and I, I get a couple of, emails from different people that are like supposed to be the gurus on this and that keep sending me stuff every week or two about what new has come out and and half of it i don't care about but there's little things that you can find that you know you need to check out it might not be worth the darn but it might be but i think what i tell everybody is is right is don't do like the lawyers that kind of tried to overlook when the websites when the, when when the online you know uh, online traffic and the websites and all that stuff, the internet is what I'm yeah. trying to say. And there's a lot of firms that got left behind to start with and they had to catch up. And a lot of these young lawyers, I'm going to be honest with you, I know some of them, they were killing it, man. They were getting all these, and just like some of the lawyers left, they're a lot faster on the LSA, but a lot of lawyers are just getting in the LSA. It's been around two or three years. There's a lot of lawyers killed it the first six months. Is he, yeah. he, he who is first is a big golden goose to start with. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, Ken, that's that's hilarious that you, you even brought that analogy up. I mean, that brings me back to about, well, let's say 10, 12 years ago. And I was calling lawyers at that time. At that time, I was selling websites. And the painstaking process to convince a firm that they need a website and how maybe this is maybe 14, 15 years back, but um, you know, how imperative it, it was. And so a lot of people I, I talked to are uh, talking to them about data and, well, oh, I've been doing this for 10, 12, 15 years, same process. And I said, wait a minute, were you that person I was trying to convince to, to, to buy a website? Yeah. That? This is the website now, like this yeah. is something that you're going to need for the future today, but you're right. And, and, and not to say, I know you're seeing organizations start to develop an AI strategy and even a position for AI. Well, I've actually come across quite a few firms out there right now that have AI specialists on staff that they're specifically designed to look at products, look at the security and privacy elements, uh, look at uh, where, like, let like the data infrastructure and where that's held and um, and you have people that are specifically assigned to incorporate AI into the firm, which I found absolutely fascinating, um, even at this early onset of, of, of the stage that we're currently in with AI in the legal industry. So. Yeah, I've actually got one of my mastermind members, believe it or not, Ryan, uh, uh, he has, his brother uh, used to be in the website, been sold it out. And it's helping him with his technology, and they are developing. Uh, so they're developing. They're in, they're in uh, beta now. Uh, something that will do the medical chronologies and the CPT codes, and can write a brief from it. Yep. Uh, so I mean, you know, and it's uh, they got a quite an investment in it, but they they believe in the future, and uh, so yeah. So I had forgot about that, but actually, I got a member that's actually. I mean, they're actually trying to create something, and they got a big law firm. They're national. They do a lot of uh, veterans work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, but they've always been tech savvy. They've always been ahead of the curve, and uh, I think they're going to. They are embracing it big time. Well, uh, yeah. Ken, just to let you know, we have that ability today. Uh, 
yeah, we, we have the ability to create a chronology within 24 hours, regardless of the amount of pages. You can have 300,000 pages, you can have two pages, but it'll develop a chronology and a summarization. It'll be beautifully displayed. You'll have words that would be hyperlinked. You can hover over those words. It'll date uh, when that incident was mentioned, give you a quick synopsis. You can click into that word and it'll take you to an abstract, a transcription, because sometimes they're hard to read and also take you to the source document. All the impairments are beautifully indexed on the side here. You can click on psych issues, give you a timeline of those psych issues, and once again, click into it. Well, you didn't tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's it's actually, a, a, a it's been a, um, we have several add-ons that we've okay. incorporated. So that's one of our add-ons, along with criminal history, bankruptcy, lien history, MVA history, crash reports, EMS reports, um okay yeah things of that nature we're soon going to be um in 2024 which is right around the corner be introducing medicare data um va that'd records be, that'd, that'd be great would it yeah yeah so we're trying to service the, the the whole lot we have a great understanding of what what data is necessary and we're not just trying to connect into data sources to extract data from those sources we're actually trying to be the source um, well, you guys, you guys were to talk at our last summit. I mean, that was the buzz going around. Yeah. I know, I know you were getting in your data because when that happens, when the lawyers run there talking at the water cooler, yeah, or at the bar, yeah, you go, you you gonna get you gonna get hammered because nobody wants to miss out on the next best thing, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's great, man. That's great. So, any parting words? I mean, I think you really laid it out there really good about it, you know, of waiting. You can't wait. I think you give some really good advice. Any other good parting words? You would yeah, I mean, I, I probably have spoken to over 2,000 firms in the last, let's say, eight, nine months here. I got to understand a lot of process and, um, uh, I guess, business models um, of different landscapes of different types of firms. Uh, what I would say is, is don't be afraid of technology. And um, coming from Silicon Valley and going into this industry, I was flabbergasted. I could not believe the lack of technology and automation that was incorporated that, or lack thereof in a lot of these firms that I was speaking to. Um, so please don't be afraid. Find a designated individual to go and learn and bring these pieces of value to uh, your organization. Um, on the settlement side, uh, we're, uh, you know, believe it or not, we haven't even actually even launched. We're looking to launch in February of next year. So we're preparing for that. So we're going to make some big noise over at the Pilma conference this year. Um, and, um, but otherwise, if you really do want to learn more about this world, what we're doing in terms of your workflows and your processes, or even have a conversation with artificial intelligence, Please get in touch with Ken to get in touch with me. More than happy to talk more about it with you. Okay. And how can they get up with Settle It if they want to try out your product? Yeah. So you can go onto our website, settleit.legal. That's S E T T L I T dot legal. Um, go onto our website. We have a little section where you can sign up uh, and connect with me. Um, my name is Ryan Shin. Uh, you'll find me on LinkedIn as well and we have a an instagram channel as on top of that settle it dot legal good deal man well thank you for taking time this is this is uh it's just changed since i practiced 25 years ago a little bit just a yeah little, just, just a, little, a little bit yeah but well, there was no websites you know what I, this is my last story i'm gonna, we're gonna go so when yeah. i started practicing in 1982 there was no uh word processors there was no uh, computers it was uh no, there was no copiers it was uh xerox uh was not a word to use you had carbon paper that's how you make copies <laughs> and you had ibm selectors with, with white out yeah yeah that tells you how old i am but but you know you have to change with the times that's one thing i've always said you have to pivot you cannot sit uh, what worked yesterday might not work today and definitely definitely will not work tomorrow. You got to stay ahead of the curve. Those who do are those who are successful. And those who don't are the ones left with their hands in their pockets saying, what happened, boss? 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, really. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate it. Until next time, this is Ken Hardison, dedicated to your success.